All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to the book of Joshua. Joshua, and that's exactly who we're studying and learning from and learning about this week as we're doing a devotional series, The Heroes of the Bible, and we're doing it in light of uh, living in the last days. You know, living in the last days. I, I hope you're catching on to the reality. You know, this book, the Bible, wasn't written last week or last month. Uh, it, it hasn't been a New York, it's not a New York Times bestseller this month. It's been the best-selling book of all time. And the Bible, what God's Word says, the world would love you to believe that throughout the years it's changed, right? The Bible morphs because it was, quote-unquote, they'd say, written by man, and it changes all the time, both of which are false, both of which are, are, are fake. Uh, number one, the Bible is God's Word. It was God's, it is God's Word. Number two, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. You know, earlier in this century, uh, you know, the, the, they found in the Qumran caves in Israel uh, something called, they call it the Dead Sea Scrolls. The reason why is the Qumran caves are near the Dead Sea in Israel. And when they, they, they found these parchments of, of full sections of the Bible, Book of Isaiah, and they, they matched the parchments in the Dead Sea Scrolls, what they said to the Book of Isaiah that's in your Bible today, and you'll be shocked to discover that it was a, basically exactly the same, right? God's word doesn't change. What God says doesn't change. The reason why he doesn't have to change what he says is because he's God and he was right the first time. That's the reason. And now we see uh, with Joshua, and we're learning about him from these last days, and we're going to see here today, chapter 4, from Joshua's life, God wanted Joshua to remember God's past faithfulness. You know, sometimes we have this temptation, especially if we're starting to serve the Lord and do the right thing, to begin to think we're like the first people that have ever walked the face of the earth, you know, in history, that follow Jesus or live for God. Uh, it's just not true. Uh, there are men and women of God who came before us, both far in the past, like we're studying Joshua, we looked at Noah, you know, and then there's also those that are closer, that paved the way for us. You know, I think of Men like Chuck Smith or Billy Graham or, you know, uh, Kay Smith, I know, just went to be with the Lord. Pastor Chuck's wife. Uh, they walk with the Lord. So many. We, the list goes on and on. And God wants us to see if he's been faithful to those who surrendered their lives to him in the past, he'll be faithful to us today. And that's exactly what he's talking to Joshua out here. Joshua 4, verse 9. Then Joshua set up 12 stones. Now listen, Israel now is crossing the Jordan River. There's a little bit of time that's passed since our last devotional. He's moving into the promised land. He's crossing the Jordan River. God has told him how to do it. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan. So they will set up 12 stones on the first side of the Jordan, 12 stones resembling a, a symbol of the 12 tribes of Israel, just like we have 50 states or what have you in America. Uh, Israel has 12 tribes. Each one of the stones is a tribe. It's, it's to represent each one of the tribes that God has been faithful. It's from a memorial stone. But now the Jordan River parts just like the, the Red Sea parted, the Jordan River will part. Uh, it was a little different if you read before this. The, 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 the Levites and the priests had to step into the river with the Ark of the Covenant. Then the sea parts. And there's a picture there for you. Uh, you know, salvation is the Red Sea parting. That's you leaving Egypt. Israel had to do nothing to be saved. Uh, they just had to walk into it. You know, Moses held out his rod, the sea parted. But the Jordan River, uh, sanctification, moving into the promises of God, moving into the promised land, moving into the spirit-filled life, God would be the one that parted the Jordan River. But in order for it to part, God told Joshua and the Israelites, you're going to have to step in. Once you step in, then it will part. Do you see the difference? Salvation, God does it all. We just walk in and receive. Sanctification, God's still doing it, but he requires us to be participants in it. You know, He says, I want you to really learn this. I want you to really experience this, so I need you to participate in the process. And we see that they step in, the river parts, they're going to put 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and it says, and they are there to this day. And basically, if you read on what happens, the priests go through, the waters will close up on it, but there'll be 12 stones that are on the bank that they can visibly see of God's faithfulness, but there'll also be 12 stones under the river 
that you won't be able to visibly see with your eye, but those who went through this together, those who were a part of the generation that went into the promised land, they'll always be able to look at each other and remember. There's 12 stones at the bottom of the Jordan River to remind us of God's faithfulness, to remind us of this day. You know, if you don't realize this, you're going to be in trouble. Satan is going to try to convince you that God is not going to see you through. Whatever you're going through today, Satan is going to try to convince you that God is not able to deliver you, that your trust in the Lord was a misplaced trust, that he is going to, this is going to be the time that he fails. It's going to be with you but it's just not true. You know, God's past faithfulness proves to us God's future faithfulness. He will be faithful. And God said to Joshua, I want you to remember my faithfulness in the past. Listen, whatever's going to come in these next weeks or months here today with you and I in the world and in our country in our own lives, we have to continue to trust The Lord's going to be faithful. He's going to see us through. He's promised. He says, even when you're faithful, faithless, he says, even when you're faithless, God says, I'll remain faithful. So believe him for that today. Father, bless your people. Encourage them. Lord, may they nail down in their minds and their hearts, and Holy Spirit, help them to do that. Your faithfulness, Lord, that you will never fail. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.